Hi, and welcome to the Sustainable Teacher Podcast. I'm so excited to have you here today, Jessica, as a classroom teacher. And I'm, uh, I just, I totally geek out on these because it's teachers on the podcast chatting about their transformations. And I'm so excited to have you here today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really yeah. appreciate the opportunity to share my experiences with others. Yay, that's so exciting. So if you wouldn't mind, start us off by introducing Jessica, who you are, your teaching life, um, and maybe a glimpse of what it was pre-flipping, but which is also pre-pandemic, uh, and what it is now. So take it away. Okay. Uh, so I am in my third year of teaching at a um, small town academy in central Maine. And I have a, I have two teenage daughters, uh, both of whom are at the high school that I teach at now. Um, so that's a lot of fun. My oldest is actually in my class this year. Um, I was super nervous about that going yeah. in, um, but it has been, it has been great. Um, oh, awesome. That's much really better cool. Than I thought it was going to be. Um, so my uh, flipping journey uh, really begins years ago. Like I need to go way back. Um, I was uh, back in our old school district. Um, I was on the school board and, for our okay. district for several terms. And I would go to the uh, school board conferences, the, the statewide conferences that they would have every year. And I would go to these workshops that teachers were presenting their flipping experiences. Okay. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I want my kids to have this for them. Okay. And I thought, if I'm ever a teacher, because even back then I thought in my head, you know, someday I'd like to be, you know, be a teacher. And I thought, this is what I would like to do. And so we fast forward through, I'm finally a teacher, right? Okay. And my first year, I'm going through the whole first year of teaching, making everything up as I go along, flying yes. by the seat of my pants. <laughs> Trying not to cry on a daily basis. Trying not to cry. Yeah, got it. Got it. <laughs> I get to Christmas break and I'm like, wow, I spend a lot of time lecturing and I don't like that because I don't spend as much time supporting the students practicing what I want them to be able to do, like practicing yeah. skills. And so over Christmas break, I said, hey, I will flip my classroom. And <laughs> okay, that's gutsy. <laughs> this is totally what people should do, right? Yeah. And so I, I found some videos. I think they were like Khan Academy videos. Okay. And some articles to go along with them. And I assigned them to the students. I said, watch these videos and read these articles. And then we'll discuss and work with the material. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was such a flop. Like, it was oh, so bummer. bad. Like, yeah. I wasn't even a weekend. I'm like, oh, I do not have the skills to do yeah. this. Yeah. I do That's... not know what I'm doing. That so I pretty much gave up on that for the rest okay. of the year. And I went back to lecturing assigning, you know, we do maybe mm -hmm. get to a little bit of group practice together. And then I give them their homework and send them off to, to do it alone. Okay. And then we would come back and we'd go over their, um, their practices, fix all the things that they had practiced wrong. <laughs> do you hear my three-year-old? Yes. <laughs> okay. I have to pause for a second. Okay. One second. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pause. Okay, so you're saying that you <clears throat> flipped over Christmas break because you thought, man, I'm just lecturing too much and I want this to change. I want more of the onus of learning to be on my kids, on the students, right? Yes. And you tried over Christmas break, but it flopped, right? It was a problem. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> thinking, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so correct me if I'm wrong. It's because it's more than just assigning videos, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It was it, I was assigning other people's videos with mm -hmm. other people's content. Um, and flipping is, is more than that. Yeah. It's not just grabbing some videos from somewhere that someone else made and covers the content that I think I want to cover. Yeah. And with that being said, sometimes that's how you make it work. Right? right. Like there's nothing against using other people's videos. I have my flip videos that a ton of psych teachers use in their classrooms and it works right. really well, but mine are made specifically for the course they teach. Right. Right. And so 
for broader subjects like a math, right, or an ELA even, um, when that changes state to state and grade level to grade level, you got to get a little more, a little yeah. more specific. So, and I teach chemistry, and okay. everybody teaches chemistry in a different order, okay. right? Mm. So, a big part of the problem that I found when with grabbing other people's videos is they were assuming knowledge that oh. my kids didn't have, or they were going over things that we had already covered, um, but. For them, it was new information. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And so that was that was part of the reason uh, it, it flopped. Yeah. Um, That's such and, a good point because it's something yeah. that I recommend to teachers is if you are able, you should absolutely be making your own videos. Yeah. And especially, I mean, think about that in the, like during the pandemic and as we're approaching the post-pandemic teaching, right? Kids are craving connection. And I'm hoping that a connection with a stable adult figure who believes in their abilities and what has their best interest in mind, that's the healthy connection that we want them to have, right? right. And so even if it's your face on a video, it's something. It's another yeah. form of um, adding to what will be that human connection. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Okay. What were you saying? I'm sorry. Um, so I, so I use these videos mm -hmm. found that it didn't work for, for me. Um, it didn't work for my students. Some of the content was over their heads, not really what I was wanting them to focus on. Um, they were getting distracted by other things. It was a, a, a new personality that they yeah. had to get used to. Um, and so, and, and I think that's a big part of making my own videos is it's consistent personality between mm. the, con what they get for content on the videos and what I do in the classroom. Uh, so I went back to lecturing because it's like, well, they need the content that I want them to have yeah. right in the order. I want them to have it. And we'll just go back to doing things the way they were. We'll go back to spending the first 15 to 20, sometimes 25 minutes of class reteaching the kids who missed it okay. on the practice while the kids who got it sit there and twiddle their thumbs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so your attempt, your attempt at responding to your students' needs, right? Yeah. Of um, reteaching things or just, you know, I just, that's remediation, right? You're remediating right. with kids who need it, but it's done so in a way that you're able to manage because you can't manage all of the levels at once. Right. Um, but that ends up meaning that kids who don't need that, like you said, are sitting. You're right. And doing nothing. Okay. Okay. Uh, so along comes the 1920 school year, right? And I'm like, I'm in my groove now. I've, I've got my, my curriculum is kind of built. I'm, I'm tweaking my curriculum. I realized that taking on flipping, well, I really need to rework my curriculum is more than I should take on, right? Yeah. I need to have a stable curriculum before I yes, take flipping. That's, right? that's huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we're going along and then March hits, right? Mm. Everything falls apart. We all go home. Our school uh, decides to go completely asynchronous remote. Okay. Uh, all of our students have one-to-one -one devices. Um, and so we go, we go asynchronous. As I said, we're, we are a boarding school. And so a lot of our kids went home. So to try to maintain synchronous learning was not going to work because morning for us is bedtime for them. Gotcha. Um, and so we went completely asynchronous. And so I took uh, and started put, doing my lessons in Nearpod because that was a tool that our, guest, our, our school bought for us to have for the teachers who wanted it. Right. And so I started making my lessons in Nearpod. As I got, you know, a few of these lessons made, I was like, I'm never lecturing again. That's because awesome. <laughs> I can deliver content, the content that I want them to have, and they can do that on their own. And then I was, at, even then, envisioning being back in the classroom mm -hmm. with students and being able to then talk about that learning that they already had, that content they already had, practice the skills. Chemistry is you think it's a lot of lab work, but it's a lot of math. Mm -hmm. really. It is. Yes. It's a lot of math. It's um, the hardest B I ever worked for in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a straight A student. 
<laughs> okay, keep going. Um, so, and, and our, our kids are often scared of the math. And so they need a lot of support in that area, which takes a lot of class time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I, and I really enjoy supporting them in that way and helping them see how math can be used and applied um, oh, instead so of just this, this theoretical thing that they have to learn because someone said they have to. Yeah. Take- as if like you just wave a magic wand and you understand and you understand and you <laughs> right. understand. There's no like, yeah, right. I took, yeah. It's like the learning process is a myth and you're <laughs> only the lucky ones really understand it. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That, that's, that was me, my sophomore year in high school taking chemistry. Like, oh, I just haven't been hit with the wand yet. <laughs> okay. Keep going. All right. So, um, so I decided I never, ever want to lecture again. And we finish, we, we finished the school year. We, mm-hmm. we ended up quitting um, Memorial Day. We, okay. we called it quits Memorial Day. And sometimes. <laughs> that's <laughs> like so funny to say it that way. I can just like, I just have this visual of the principal be like, all right, that's it. We're done. <laughs> we forfeit. <laughs> we much. forfeit for the year. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting you so much, but this is fantastic. Keep going. <laughs> so, you quit at Memorial Day. <laughs> so we, we, we give up at Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. And about that time I had, and I don't even remember, I wish I remembered how I found you. But I stumbled across and I, I guess it was probably came up at, like in my Facebook feed as maybe okay. a sponsored or like someone else had seen you and okay. posted. I, I don't even remember, but yeah. like, but I found you. Yeah. And I, you know, I went to your webinar, like your, awesome. your like what, uh, your one classroom. hour yeah. Yeah. classroom webinar. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my goodness, this woman has her stuff together. <laughs> she <can show> me. <laughs> yes, she has her shiz together. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh. <laughs> so, um, so I signed up for the June session last, uh, last summer. A flip classroom session, formula. The session that started to, it, in June, which okay. worked out perfectly because I like it started the week after I had to finish grades. Awesome. Um, So I finished grades and then the very next week started in with you. And it was absolutely amazing because you guided me through how to actually do it. Like not the like theory of why it's a good thing to do. Yeah. I had that. I understood that. I had mm-hmm. understood that years ago when I listened to other other teachers' testimonials yes. with their experiences. I'm like, yes, totally. But how do I actually do it? What are, what are the are... practical steps? Right. Yeah, like, I get, I got to make a video, but how? Right. And I but feel like that's not the video. first thing I do. And then right. what do I do after? Yes. Right. I think we're, we're in what, like week three or four before we actually made any videos? Yes. Yeah. That, thank you for yeah. saying that. Yeah, we are in, it's module three, which in the course is week three right. um, of the course before we even talk about videos. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, you know, all of that groundwork Yay. and even so yesterday was major milestone for me. Okay. I finished, I, I recorded, edited and uploaded my last unit for the year. Hallelujah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> That's like such a teacher win. Yes. yes. Aren't you just looking at next year and don't you just see like mimosas in the morning? Yes. I'm just kidding. Right. And your feet up on the desk, like yes. you teach yourself. Totally. No. <laughs> No, that's not what it'll be. Um, but it could be if you want, if you didn't want to keep your job. But yeah, that's great. Right. If I had no interest in continuing yes. to do this. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's so, so cool. So cool. But, but the importance of all of the pre-work, right? Making sure everything is, you know, the the way you want it to be. Yes. Makes that video a, so much more meaningful and be so much easier to create. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was, you know, and, and looking the time we spent on looking at the entire curriculum, what are the lessons that I actually want to teach? What are the activities that go with those lessons and actually mapping it out? And I, I mean, this is good teacher practice, but mm-hmm. I was in year three of, you know, flying by the seat of my, or I, I had just finished year two of flying by the okay. seat of my pants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so didn't really know how to go about doing this. And mm-hmm. you really, really helped me 
lay that out. And I have a fantastic tool that I now, you know, I'm adding to. And over the summer, I'm really, my plan is to go back and really flesh it out. Because again, this year has been a little bit survival. Mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely. But, uh, you know, I, I have resources and now I have a place to organize them instead of just everything somewhere in my Google Drive, right? Mm -hmm. Now I have, you know, a map and how long do I want to spend on this activity and this lesson? And what are the, what are the things that I've created? (laughs) Like my, I use Quizlet for some of my units because, you know, if, if I have a unit that's pretty vocab heavy or just like basic content heavy, Quizlet's a really good tool for that. Mm-hmm. And I went to like make new Quizlets for one of the units this year. And then I went into my Quizlet and realized, oh, I've already got those made. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me go helping my future yeah. self. Thank you, past self. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Aren't I smart? <laughs> Aren't I brilliant? Yes. <laughs> that's so awesome. So so I so I spent the summer putting everything together. Um, of going through the course. I absolutely loved that you built in work weeks. Yes. Those yeah, we call them work on the work weeks or wow right. weeks. Yes. Yeah. They were amazing. <laughs> also, one of the big things that I really benefited from from the course was actually not you. Um, oh, it nice. was my group, my Yay, PLC. Yay, that's awesome. Right? We, we had our little PLC. There are yeah. five five of us, I okay. think. Okay, okay, great. The ladies are going to shoot me for not remembering. Oh, no, <laughs> I, so I think funny. there's five of us. Do you uh, still keep in touch with them? Yes, actually, I posted oh, to them last awesome. last night. Guess what I did today? <laughs> that's so awesome! Oh, that's oh. fantastic. So we we would meet um, pretty much once a week, I think, okay. uh, just to talk about because we were all science teachers, yeah. uh, high school science teachers, okay. and so we would talk about you know what how we were interpreting you know what you were suggesting we do you know you're not a science teacher and yes, so we would exactly. take you know your ideas mm-hmm. and your thoughts and your your guidance and we would say okay how do we apply this to high school science yes. how does it work for us and we would toss ideas back and forth and and it was great and we also would share you know especially our, our first few videos we would share them with each other oh. you know get feedback um that's and it so was amazing. It was really great. Okay, so just to give some context here, Jessica's talking about the PLC program that's part of Flip Classroom Formula, which actually just started last summer. That was the first year that I did it. We're going to be doing it again this year, um, <clears throat> where I help organize what are small pods of teachers, you could say. And we just call them PLCs because that makes total sense, right? Um, And I give them some guidance on what they could be talking about on a weekly basis. They could take and run with it or throw that in the trash, right? Um, And it's most of the time grade level or course like subject based. And the, the hope is that you meet about once a week and I am beyond thrilled that that was such a great experience for you because that took some some time to make that, put that together. And I was a little nervous, like, I'm trusting other teachers to like lead these groups. Is it going to be okay? I've only just met them. And you're saying that it was great. And oh, even was- if you were the only group that it was great for, <laughs> that was worth it, right? <laughs> like, that was thank worth you for it. taking the time to make it because yeah. really it, it did, it was, it was really helpful. Yes, I was okay, so uh, kind of a sidebar here. I was talking to a former colleague of mine a couple weeks ago. I don't know. Hold on. And we were talking about how it's so refreshing to be around teachers and to really collaborate and work with teachers who are invested and like minded with you. Um, yes. Granted, if if you're a lucky teacher, you have a team that you teach with. You're not mm-hmm. on an island teaching by yourself. But even then, that doesn't mean that everyone wants to collaborate. And no judgment there, right? But right. there is something to say for even virtually knowing teachers, whether that's in a Facebook group or in an online course like Flip Classroom Formula with their PLC groups, that they are all invested They all want to improve in the ways that are similar to your desires for your classroom. That is, um, to me, that is like the tide rising. The tide rises and so do all the boats, right? And that is just such a cool experience. And I'm so glad that 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 happened for you. Um, That's that's really, really great. It was good. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. 
Um, so we talked about pre flipping mm -hmm. and your journey in figuring out flipping. What does your classroom look like now? So what shifts have you seen in your students, in your classroom, just in general, um, all things flipping now that okay. you are. So, doing that. um, so we started the year hybrid. Um, I had by, by the end of the court, by the end of flip, flip flipped classroom formula. Yep. Uh, I had my first three units ready to go. Oh, that's awesome. My so. goal is two for everybody, but you got three. That's, that's awesome. Okay. It was good. Um, so I had those ready to go and we started, uh, we started hybrid, which meant that we had, uh, we, well, we get, had three options for students. We had, um, a fully remote option. We had, um, a stay in Asia option because mm -hmm. we had a number of students who couldn't get back to school. Yeah. Um, and we had a, an option to be at school two days or, and at home for two days. Okay. And we split that group. That was of course the majority of our student body. Okay. And so that group was split alphabetically. Uh, and so we had our A through L kids come to school on Monday and Tuesday. Our M through Z kids were at home, but were expected to log into class every day. Okay. So uh, unlike our asynchronous plan for last spring, this year we were going with, you have to be logged into class. Right? And that means live streaming into it? Yes. Or you, you view the live stream. Right. Okay. You're, you're, we, Google meets We're we're a Google school. Okay. Um, and so, so our kids were, would use Google meets. We, as teachers would open up the Google meet at the beginning of class. Um, the recommendation from actually the committee that I was on, which mm -hmm. was the tech, the tech committee when we were trying to get ready for the school year yeah. um, was that our kids spend no more than half of their time on their remote days, actually logged into class. Okay. And we got about mm, three days into school and teachers like, whoa, that's too hard. And, and it went out the window. Okay. Okay. Um, and so my girls who are both, both in high school, one's a freshman, one's a sophomore. Um, when I would get home at the end of the day on their remote days, which were the Monday and Tuesday, mm -hmm. um, they would be exhausted. Okay. Um, it very, you know, I, on their they're, remote days, like they're on their at remote home, days. on their at home days, and they're exhausted. Okay. They were exhausted. Um, their attitude. I mean, they they were almost depressed. Okay. Um, because they were watching other kids interact mm. and couldn't be a part of it. Mm. They were. Um, trying to interact with the teacher, but the teacher has a room full of kids. Yes. And so the attention that the teacher can give to the kids who are remote was very limited. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times teachers would um, kind of forget, or at least my, my girls felt that the teachers would forget that they were there. Yeah. Right? I'm going to wholeheartedly admit that I would absolutely do that. I've delivered PD before where teachers um, were watching in a live stream and I forgot about them. I'm like, oh yeah, there's like 50 of you watching you over doing? here on Google Meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and there's no, like I said, there's yeah. no judgment there because it was no. brand, it's brand new. It's uh -huh. brand new. Okay. Keep going. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so I had my videos, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I chose to do my class differently. Okay. Um, and so on their remote, so I, I split my students in half according okay. to my kids who were, we call them cohort A, okay. which were our A through L students and cohort B, which were our M through Z students who mm -hmm. I saw in person on Thursday and Friday because okay. we had Wednesday for a planning day. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I would, on their remote days, I would assign them typically two videos, two lessons, because I take my videos, I put them into a Google form. So they watch their lesson, they take their notes, then they have questions after the video to tell me that they actually watched the video and mm -hmm. took notes. Mm -hmm. uh, and that goes in as a participation grade. Like Great. if they did not, if they cannot answer these simple questions, they clearly did not participate very well. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Cause, and they're easy questions, right? Like if you watch the video, right. you get these. If yeah. you listened, yes. if you wrote it down, you yes. should be able to answer this question. <laughs> yes. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> They're not like understanding questions. They're, did you watch the video yes. questions? Gotcha. Okay, great. 
So I would assign um, two of you, typically two of these uh, on their remote day. For two um, so, remote days. Yes. Yeah, so okay. I have, we, uh, we have block schedule. Mm-hmm. So of those two remote days, I would have them for one of the days. They have four, four classes um, or four periods per day. Mm-hmm. Um, so they would have their day one classes on Monday and their day two classes on Tuesday and, you know, things flip flop, but that's the basic gist of it. <clears throat> So on there, I would have them for one of their remote days and I would assign them for two lessons. I would have them check in for attendance because we were required to do that, Mm -hmm. ask if they had any questions, make sure they knew what the expectations were and send them on their way. Okay. They could use that period uh, for doing those lessons if they chose to. Mm -hmm. They could use that period to do other work if they wanted to and do the lessons at a time that worked better for them. Okay. Um, they could, they were in charge of their time management. Gotcha. Right? Um, I just asked that their lessons be done before midnight, the day before they were going to be in the building with gotcha. me. Mm-hmm. And so that I had a chance to go through, check their, check their form, see if they had questions that they had put in the form um, and be ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then when they come into class, we would do what, so they would have done two lessons. So at this point, I'm trying to cram two lessons worth of like group practice and going over it um, and then giving them usually two practices to take home. So the in, my in class looked, ended up looking very similar to pre-pandemic. Okay. Simply because I was just taking the lecture time out, yeah, um, doing the group practice with the time we had left in class, doing labs when I could, um, and then sending them again off to do their practice on their own, yeah. right? Yeah, um, so our in class days were very hectic, mm-hmm. um, it was. It, we were we were trying to pack a lot in there. Yeah, that's but the schedule every you were time, given. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every time I asked the students, "Is what I'm doing working? Mm-hmm. Is this okay?" It was resounding positive feedback. They were so appreciative that on their remote days, they were in charge of when they did things, how fast they did things, um, and they could handle the fast pace because they had had the time to t- do the content at their own pace. Okay. Right? They could handle the hectic in class that was necessary due to having so few in class moments. Yeah. Because they were able to go at their own pace during what equated to their asynchronous time, thanks to you, right. um, because of the lessons, the videos that you built in those formative chat questions yeah. inside yeah. of a Google form. Yeah. That One of the awesome. things that my daughter shared with me um, was that when... So when, and everybody, everybody can relate to this, when you are tuned into something virtually, Mm -hmm. it's very easy to tune out, right? It's so easy for what's going on at Mm -hmm. home to take your attention away, to just lose focus, right? Because as my, my younger daughter calls it the box, she's in the box, (laughs) (laughs) having to focus on what's happening on her computer screen. Right. Um, and so you lose focus and if you're streaming into a live class, if you lose focus and then you come back, you don't get to go back and say, wait, what, what did you just say? Because you can't like give the teacher that confused look. Uh You can't give the little raised hand. Like, um, I'm sorry. I, I, I lost what you were saying. Right. Uh Because you're on, you're on the computer screen and to the teacher, your face is this little, you know, two by two inch square if you're lucky. Right. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so what, what my older daughter said she really appreciated was that when she would lose focus, which watching a video, she would lose focus Absolutely. because you know, I do. I've, I've been watching other people's videos this year <laughs> for, for not for one of my other preps. I'm like, oh, yeah. I got to really get this material down. So I'm going to yeah. watch these videos and then teach them. So, Absolutely. Um, you know, you lose focus, right? And she's like, when I lose focus, I stop it. I go back to where I knew what was going on and I pick up from there again. Mm. And so she could get the whole content, even if she was having a rough focus day. Yes. Right. 
Yeah. Even knowing it's going to take me a little longer because I'm kind of, you know, frazzled today and not as focused, but I don't have the high stakes of live streaming and like of streaming into a live class that I can't go back and view again or rewind or, oh, okay. This is so, so awesome. So something that I actually was talking about in a Facebook live yesterday and I've talked to multiple teachers about is in our, our, struggle of coming up with what a schedule would be for this year for all schools, right? And it all mm-hmm. kind of looks differently for, for everybody because we were just going with what we had, right? Yeah. When we're having those experiences where we have in-person students and we have virtually streaming into the live class students, what we're saying is that those are equivalent experiences. And they're not. And they're the not. learning is not the same. Uh -uh. And pretending it's the same is, has been doing such a disservice to our kids this year. Yes. And it absolutely breaks my heart. And that's not to say that live streaming in can't be valuable in other ways. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I would, I don't, I'm kind of just thinking off the, the top of my head here, maybe like getting kids to interact with each other in a live stream. Mm -hmm. Um, but that it doesn't mean that you can't have kids you know, stream into a live class. It's just, you can't say that they are the equivalent experience. I think that's not only doing a disservice to students, but to education as a whole, to schools (laughs) that are doing that. Kids are going to find better options elsewhere. And that means teacher jobs, if we're being super honest. So um, I love how you just took what you were given, because that's all we can do as teachers is take what we're given, right? And as much as we might want to whine about that, it doesn't help very much, right? <laughs> right. And like, doesn't no, problem. yeah, I'm going to make the best of this. And maybe when I get home, I'll c- complain to my husband, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I'm going to make the best of this. And you did that by taking their um, synchronous time and saying, yep. here's what needs to happen in that yep. time. Make sure you report in for attendance purposes, et cetera. And your students' feedback was key. It was, yeah. That's and and that your your daughters were able to see it because you have one of your girls in your class, right? Yes. Yep. So they were able to see the value in that that and doing that differently. Yeah. Man, that's amazing. That is just oh that's so so cool. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um what will your classroom look like moving forward? So, ah, so I actually got to, I get to taste it this year Yay! because come Mar- March 15th, the decision was made that we were going to go to four days in person. Okay. So we had, we still have our fully remote students, but the vast majority of our students, um, March 15th came back to four days in person. Okay. Um, and so I was, I was nervous about this um, because I, I was m- mo- on the in-person days, especially my day twos, which I have a lot more students on my day twos. Okay. I was really tired at the end of the day yeah. um, because for, for three periods straight um, and our, we have seven this year, our blocks are only 75 minutes, but for those three 75 minute periods, pretty much straight, I was trying to hold their attention the entire time okay. because we had so much that we needed to cover yeah. when I had them in person, mm-hmm. right? And so I was thinking, oh my goodness, having all of them in class, I don't know how I'm going to be upright at the end of the day. This is going <laughs> to kill me, right? And they come back and <laughs> it was... Wow. So I had assigned, I had assigned just one lesson um, prior to them coming to in in person because I knew I was going to see them twice that week. Whoa. Amazing. Okay. So twice in a week. Yeah. Okay. So you told them ahead of time, here's your homework for day one of being in person four days a week. Okay. So here's your lesson. Have it ready because we're going to focus on just this content. Okay. So they had their lesson done. They came in. I I talked to them. You know, I I stood up in front of them for mm-hmm. like maybe fifteen minutes, just mm-hmm. going over the important things that I wanted to make sure they had taken away from that lesson. Mm-hmm. And then we did. We we went into some what I call group practice. So I put a problem up on the board. 
we might kind of go through it a little bit together. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, or I'm help, I'm asking them to guide me through it. They can do it on their own. I'm walking around, checking and seeing how mm -hmm. they're doing, seeing, you know, the students who have got it, good thumbs up, mm -hmm. go on. If you want to go to the next, the next, you know, group practice problem, mm -hmm. the kids who need some help, you know, I'm, I'm having a little conversation with them to, to bring them along. Then we come back together, have, you know, more of a group conversation about how to do those problems. So I'm not holding their attention myself for very long. Okay. Then, or, or definitely not for a very long stretch, right? Okay. Then we finish up the group practice. We finish our group conversation. I give them their independent practice. They sit and they do their independent practice. The ones who got it, I, I go over, I take a quick look at their work, mm -hmm. like, good, you're good to go. If you finish, just load it up into Google Classroom for me. And then you can work on the lesson that's assigned for the next week or for the, for the next class meeting, right? Yeah. The kids who need help on their independent practice, I'm actually able to have individual conversations mm. with them on their independent practice to make sure they actually understand what yes. they're doing, right? <laughs> yes. oh. Everybody finishes their independent practice in class. We have time to correct the independent practice in class yes. <laughs> while everything is still fresh in their minds. Yes. While they still can have their questions of, wait, why do we do it that way? Mm -hmm. And have that conversation Finish up class, say, make sure you have the next lesson done before we meet again. Mm -hmm. And I got to the end of those that first Monday and Tuesday, and I was like, I'm not exhausted. Oh. This is amazing. I'm not exhausted I because I wasn't trying to hold their attention for 75 minutes. Yes. Straight. Yeah. I was holding their attention for 15 minutes at a time, mm -hmm. you know, at the most. Mm -hmm. And it was so much better. It was wow. <laughs> it just well, couldn't... and refreshing that, and this is what I'm getting from from listening to you. Refreshing that you were able to meet the needs of all of your students in the different like cohorts that they were in. Like yeah. super excelling students, mm -hmm. you're able to move on. You're not sitting twiddling your thumbs waiting yes. on me. There's something <laughs> else for you to do. Students who go at like a you know, typical normal pace, you're able to respond to their questions and meet with them. Students who go at a slower pace, they don't feel the pressure to be rushed. They don't yes. feel like they are a nuisance to you because right. you have the class time to actually talk to them and you have the brain space to talk to them because everyone else is occupied. Right. Yes. Oh, there's just so many You can see the relief on their faces, those kids yes. who struggle, that it was okay to ask because oh. they weren't slowing anybody else down. And the kids who got it, they had time to do their lesson in class. I, my, my top kids had time to finish their lesson in class. And so they had no homework. Yeah. And still did well. And still did well. Yeah, like excellent at their, <laughs> uh, did well for them. Yeah. Right. Oh. right. Okay. So something I just heard you say that totally, it even gets me a little emotional is that you could see the relief on the kid's face who normally struggle with something like a chemistry or like a mat, like the, the hard parts, the skill-based stuff, right? Like that was me, my sophomore year, <laughs> and I better not have raised my hand or she was going to bite it off. Right. Oh. <laughs> like, um, but that, that's neither here nor there. But you saw the relief on the kid's face. And here's what I'm betting happened. Those students recognized, well, she's available. She's not like doing anything that's whole class. So I'm not taking her away from anything or anyone else. So why not ask? Right. I was on a Facebook Live not too long ago and a teacher said the power in me just being available to my kids changed yep. everything about what I do. It changed me as the teacher and how I have empathy and compassion for the kids. Not that you don't as a teacher. It's just I have the space now. Right. Right. I'm no longer so frazzled yes. and trying to get through. Mm. Right. This is just so, so amazing. Yeah. And it's all so, because of a streamlined process. Yeah. Not necessarily because it was more work. Not that it's not work. Yeah. It's not that it's oh, yeah. more work. It's just a streamlined process that makes your class time 
ultra effective. Yeah. Oh, this is so cool. So you already got a taste of yeah. what some kind of semblance of normalcy right. may be right. moving forward. Yes. Fingers crossed that you can Fingers keep crossed. that for the remainder of the school yeah. year. Um, yeah. And so I next am so year, excited I'm, for you. Yeah, next year I'm really looking forward to actually having time to do the the labs that I want to do with these kids yeah. because chemistry is, I mean, it, it it's a science. It's a hands-on science. science, right? Yeah, yeah. We should be able to do the should fun be blowing thing. stuff up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> every time I leave, every time I have to like, if I have to step out of my room as I walk away, I'm like, be good, don't blow anything up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Don't. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, um, so I'm really looking forward to being able to do more of that um, experiential learning than instead of focusing so much on content delivery, because they'll get the content at home on their own time at their own pace. Yes. Um, That's so, so awesome. So, so we can spend our class time doing the things that are fun. Yeah. That, that are engaging for them. That yeah. really get you going, right? Like, yeah, yeah exactly. I get to like get out my beakers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that's so cool. And that's yeah. that's really meaningful, right? That that it's um, of course you're gonna like do your job and you're gonna be engaged and and perform and be effective. Right. Um, but to get to do the fun stuff too, that's what keeps you in the classroom yeah. for a long time. Um, but also having those connections with kids seeing yeah. those moments of relief on their face because you're yeah. available to them because they do need their teacher. And having time to have like honest, per like normal person conversation. Oh, that's so cool. Right? Like just yeah. who are you? Who am who I? What do you know? We, I have one period that we keep coming back to talking about our Marvel characters, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you have those inside jokes and inside conversations yeah. that are unique to each group of kids. Yeah. And now you have space to do those without feeling like you're sacrificing content to right. connect with kids. Yeah. That is so, so cool. Okay. I don't think I have any other questions because this has been just so, so amazing. Um, is there anything else that you want to kind of say to the world of teachers listening on the Sustainable Teacher Podcast about flipping or your experience in, in flipping journey? Oh, I just think flipping is the bomb. I, <laughs> the bomb <got> <laughs> I, I wish my girls had this mm. experience from the beginning with all of their teachers that yeah. they, we didn't, that their teachers hadn't spent so much time talking at them and could spend more time talking with them. Yeah. Um, I think our the students benefit so much from a cl flipped classroom right now. I'm still in the throes of developing all of the content for my flip, you know, for mm -hmm. my flip classroom. Mm -hmm. So this year has been a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It has been a lot of work, but it's totally worth it. It's worth it first because I know my kids are benefiting mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. from the work that I've put in this year. Right now. Yeah. And I know that I get to benefit next year. Mm -hmm. because that stuff is already made. And now I can focus my attention on developing the engaging learning activities that are going to benefit my students. And if I don't get to the point of making everything perfect, because nothing is ever, mm -hmm. you know, we're never done. Right. No. But I have something, mm -hmm. right. I have stuff. And if, you know, I run out of steam, it's, it's there. Yes. I don't have to invent it again. Yes. Oh, that's so I don't great. have to say the same thing for periods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I have four of the same prep, which is great, but yes. that means I, I get to uh, now use that same, I've said it once. I don't have to say it four times yeah. every year, year yeah. after year, yes. right? Yeah. And forget what you said to one period and not to the yeah, other. Totally. You're like the most overpaid parrot there is, right? Like like just squawking the same thing, bell after bell. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that's so, so awesome. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for taking oh, some time you. out of your spring break, right? Um, to <laughs> chat with us on the Sustainable Teacher Podcast. Uh, I cannot thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you enough. 
Oh, thank you. But also you. just want to say how proud I am um, and humbled I am that I got to be a small part in <laughs> what became your successes with your students and with your girls, right? Not going to lie that whenever you talk about your girls, that's what pulls on my heartstrings as a mother as well. And that I'm the same way. I hope that um, that streamlined process is available to my boys um, and in a way that doesn't bog down their entire day with loads and loads of work and confusion. Yeah. And, and we're figuring this out right now. We're figuring it out, right? But that's why I'm, I'm trying to reach more teachers because it's, it's streamlined for you. It's streamlined for them. That's exactly so awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. And I can't wait to talk more soon. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. See ya. <laughs>